The second strong experimental design is called the pre-test post-test control group design. So it's an improvement on the first one because of the presence of the pre-test. So we can see that both the groups are present and the participants are randomly assigned to each of the group because that's a strongest or true experimental design. And in every true experimental design, we go for random assignment. The third is both groups are pre-tested on dependent variable. And because of this pre-test on the dependent variable, this makes it more better than the previous post-test only control group design. We adopt the normal procedure of doing the experiment. The treatment is offered in the experimental group and the control condition is offered in the control group. Then both the groups are post-tested to find the effect of treatment on dependent variable. Symbolically, we can represent this by control group and experimental group. Both have R, which means that the individuals are randomly assigned in both the groups and therefore the two groups are equal. So we have O1, which represents the pre-test in the control group. Then there is no treatment offered in the control group and then we have O2 which is the post-test in the control group. For the experimental group, we have O3 which is the pre-test in the experimental group, then we offer treatment and then we go for post-test which is represented by O4. Then we go for finding the individual change in each group. So the change in the control group can be found by O2 minus O1. While the change in the experimental group can be found by O4 minus O3. And after finding this, then we can subtract these two to find the exact effect of the treatment. Here we have a figurative representation of this design. So we have the research sample and we take people randomly from the research sample and form the two groups. So we have the control group, we have the experimental group, both have random assignment. And then we termed one group randomly as the control group, the second group as the experimental group. So the two groups are equal. We go for pre-test in the control group, no treatment, and then post-test. For the experimental group, we have the pre-test, we have the treatment, and then we take the post-test. So this design offer more improvement and more control of internal validity because we are controlling the confounding variables. We have the pre-test score as well and therefore this gives us a better view of the variables before the treatment. The second is that the effectiveness of intervention can be determined by comparing pre-test and post-test score. So because we have the pre-test score available now, so this pre-test score provides a baseline data for judging the effect of independent variable. If we have the pre-test score here and we have the post-test score here, we can find what was the effect of the treatment by subtracting the pre-test score from the post-test score. What are the drawbacks of pre-test, post-test design? Number one is sensitizations. Because we are taking two tests, the pre-test and the post-test, therefore the pre-test may sensitize participants and therefore their performance on the post-test may be affected because they have already taken a similar test before